Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my wrap up for the month of January. So I have my trusty planner here. As you can see, I have filled out my reading wrap up page. I'm going to use this to help me talk you through all the books that I finished in the month of January. So everybody say hello to Tabby. She wanted to join in as well and make her thoughts known. Um, she gets very frustrated by books because they're always all over the place, getting in her way. And she can't get on the arm of the sofa where she wants to sit while I'm filming. So everybody say hello. January was a fantastic reading month for me. Um, there were two readathons going on, both of which um, played right into my hands because they weren't really set in stone readathons. Um, the first of those was clean up your Kindle or clean up your e-reader um, and the aim was just to read books uh, that you already have on your e-reader and not read any new books at all. And the other readathon was um, the final book support group run by Steph over at Steph Loves where she just aims to read books in series. Um, again, I have quite a few books in series on my Kindle. So I tend to, she only does those through the weekends or week long and I tend to do them as the month because I have so many series in progress that I do find having it as a month long is more motivating to me and I'm more likely to pick up more books and make more progress in series uh, that way round. So those are the two readathons. I didn't follow specific prompts. There were specific prompts, um, but I didn't really follow them. I just kind of read books and tried to get them off of my TBR so that I could reduce it down. So let's just go through some of the stats for you. I managed to read 10 books in the month. Now, seven of those books were books that I already had on my TBR at midnight on the 1st of January. So I've knocked seven books off of my massive list of books that I already owned and I feel really good about. One thing I have decided to do, and you might have spotted it down here in the bottom corner, is I am keeping a track and I am earning myself some book money. So the owned books I read, there were seven of those. Now I'm going to gift myself one pound for every book that I read that was on my TBR. However, because I'm also trying to be intentional with my book buying, if I borrow a book from the library to read instead of purchasing it, I'm going to give myself 50p. Um, now, the I know that probably sounds counterintuitive, um, gift, re rewarding myself for borrowing books from the library, um, but it does mean that actually I'm going to make more effort to use the library. I have quite a few series in progress that I want to make a dent in as well. Um, there is one particular series that is huge. There are over 60 stories, um, novels and novellas, when you add them all up, in the series. I can't afford to buy them all. I can't afford to buy them all the time. However, they are available through my library. So, And one of those was read this month. Um, and that is one of the three that weren't on my uh, existing TBR, but it counted for continuing a series. So instead of buying it, I borrowed it. I made use of other resources other than spending money and increasing my TBR and not making a dent in the books that I already own. Um, two books were actually from the library. The other book that was from the library was for my book club read. And then the third book that wasn't on my TBR was a new to me purchase, but I purchased it in the month of January. I read it in the month of January. It did not add to my ongoing TBR. So that is all positive as far as I'm concerned with how my year is going. I don't tend to get say what my ratings are for books in my wrap up videos, but on average, uh, it was a 3.4 rating across those 10 books. 
I read a total of 2,168 pages and I listened to a total of 21 hours and 55 minutes of audio. Now, that's not quite right. I did listen to slightly less and read slightly more, um, but for one of the books that I actually listened to it, uh, I used both audio and physical. Um, I've just counted whichever was the main format that I used. I read two physical books, six ebooks, and listened to two audiobooks. I read romance, fantasy and crime and then there was some contemporary and I think thriller-ish in there um, as well. And yeah, those were my stats for the month. Um, I think I have started the year with a bang. So let's tell you which books I managed to get through. My first read was an extremely quick read. It was only about 40 pages long, 50 pages long, and that is Dragon's First Christmas by Jessie Donovan. Um, this is set in her Dragon Shifter world of novels, specifically on the Stonefire Dragons site. Um, and it's about a young girl, Daisy, and she is a human who has moved to Stonefire with her mum. And she's really enthusiastic about all things dragon, but she's also really enthusiastic about teaching the dragons all things human. So our human traditions, our human ways. The dragons don't really, they, although they ha kind of have Christmas, they don't really have Christmas in quite the same way that humans do. So this is all about Daisy teaching um, the dragon shifters about gift giving um, and all of the joys that comes with that so and it was just a great it was a great little way to start off the year um it also finished off a series because she's done these as a series in their own right but within the same world and it is probably going to be the last one that she writes you never know she might re write more from daisy's perspective as daisy gets older and grows through her teens it would be kind of nice to see that somehow um, but yes, if she doesn't, she doesn't. So there we go. Um, it was a great start to the year. The second book that I read is The Dragon's Need, again by Jessie Donovan. This is book two in her Tahoe Dragon Mate series. So again, it's in her Dragon Shifter world, but it's set over um, around Lake Tahoe in the United States. Uh, this is about um, a young woman who has decided... Uh, she is a dragon shifter and she has taken part in a lottery, which means um, a group of men are pulled from the lottery, human men, um, and they get to spend one night with a dragon female. Um, and it just so happens that she chooses the human male who turns out to be her forever mate. And it's about what happens there. There are lots of dangers. Um, it seems America has the prejudice against dragons that uh, the UK does. It seems to manifest itself in a different way. In fact, there are in in this world, it's kind of the other way around. Um, there is danger to humans from dragon shifters as well who are prejudiced against the humans and don't want them um, on their lands. So the fact that this young woman is mating a human is a bit of a problem and it does put him in some danger. Again, it's quite a quick read. It was a novella rather than a full novel. It was only a couple of hundred pages. Uh, it was fast reading and it was another one that was on my TBR. So it worked towards cleaning up my Kindle, but it also carried on a series I already had in progress um, for the readathon that Steph was doing. So it worked really, really well. The next book was Touch of Eternity by Emily Bold, and I don't really remember very much about this one. I didn't enjoy it that much. I think it was fairly repetitive. Um, it's about a young woman who finds out she has magical powers. Other than that, don't really remember anything about it. Completely blanking on it. Don't really want to remember anything about it. I think I gave it two, two and a half stars. 
Um, I'm not going to continue this series, so I think that's probably all I really need to say about that one. After the disappointment of Touch of Eternity, I had to go with something that I knew I was going to enjoy, so I went back to Jesse Donovan, only this time I picked up The Survivor, which is the final book that she has written so far in her Kelder and Runic Warriors series. This is a science fiction romance series set in um, fictional planets. It is human and it is mostly human aliens. Um, we don't have a lot of human alien pairings. I think there has been only one so far in the series. The rest of them are all aliens cutting together, which I think is brilliant um, because a couple of the other alien romances that I've read, they really do just follow human alien pairings and don't really explore the the cultures of the um the other worlders uh as as closely as they could do whereas Jessie Donovan has really dived in and she is creating this whole culture this whole setup um this whole community of aliens um they have enemies they have rivals they have customs they have historical um things that are just really outdated way of thinking um with much like we do on earth um and it's really really great i really enjoyed this this is following um a princess she's recently found out or recently been introduced as a princess of the world that we're mostly inhabiting um, and it's put her and her loved ones in danger she unfortunately is an unmarried mother she has a new baby her fa the father of her baby he had every intention of being her mate and fighting to be by her side but he was a soldier in war and he died in service or so they think he actually survived and this is about their reunion and about his fight to um stay apart because things have happened to him that mean that he is not um the male that he was before and he feels like he would be dragging um his previous partner and her down only he doesn't realize that he left her pregnant so there is lots to overcome here and there is lots of trauma um so trigger warnings for trauma and um abuse um with this with this book in particular but throughout this series it is a theme um so just be warned going into it that there may be some things in there that she doesn't go into them heavily um but they are there as part of the ongoing plot the next book was my purchase that i made this month and this was a new release that i'd wanted to buy when it came out last year but i did not have the funds for it um however i was gifted some book money for christmas so i did go and pick it up and i picked it up the weekend that steph was specifically doing her readathon because it does fit the prompts it is a book in a series is the next book in a series and it brings a series up to date because it's the most recent release and that book if you haven't guessed already is heartstopper volume 5 by alice oseman i was unsure if i was going to continue with this because books three and four i were a little disappointed by i don't feel they quite had the right amount of representation that they should have however i got swept up in all the height and all the gushiness and i decided to pick it up and go with it um and i'm glad i did because i thoroughly enjoyed this um this book was less about the mental health um problems that um one of the characters is going through and more about the coming of age stuff um in specifics uh they nick and charlie are facing being separated because nick is starting to investigate investigate going off to university charlie is the year behind him at school so it will mean they will be apart for, for at least 12 months maybe longer if they decide to take different paths um yeah and i just i thoroughly enjoyed this volume as soon as i picked it up i couldn't put it down um 
and it it's just it's just beautiful um this teenage coming of age love story and i'm thoroughly on board with them as a couple they are just cute together it's wonderful to read it's wonderful to see reading this one was like having um in uh to quote olaf from frozen it's like a warm hug um and I just absolutely adored it. And I was really glad that I picked it up and that I decided to continue on with the series. There will only be one more volume after this, um, volume six. Not quite sure when that will be coming out. So again, another series bang up to date. Um, so it can come off of the list. The next finish of the month was my first library pickup and that is Survivor in Death by JD Robb. Um, I specifically picked this one up because it's the next book in the In Death series that I need to continue with. It fit for the month because it was continuing a series in progress so it fit for the readathon. Um, and yes, it's the next book in Eve and Rourke's story. Eve is a New York police detective. I have talked about this book so many times. I think this is book 20. I think. I can't remember. Um, I Yeah, I think I'm about um, a quarter of the way through the series with this book. Maybe a bit less. Maybe a third. Um I enjoyed this one. The last couple of books, I felt that there wasn't quite so much progression, but I think with this book, you did see a little more progression, um, a little more emotion from Eve. Um, she very much has to be responsible for a child whose family has been murdered, and it really brings out all the things that she does and doesn't want from her relationship with Rourke. But it also does the same for Rourke as well. And it's interesting that um, they have different thoughts. And it's, it will be interesting to see how that will affect them moving forward. Um, again, um, this book, you don't know who the killer is until the killer is revealed. Uh, this was one of those. Some of the previous books as well, and I think that's probably been a bit of a letdown as well, is that you've known who the killer is from the start. This book, you didn't know who they were. Um, you did get chapters from their perspective or paragraphs from their perspective, but you didn't know who they were. And I really liked that about it. It really didn't give it away. Um, and I think that this was J.D. Rock back in form with this series. So much so that I have already um, put in a reserve for the next book in the series. So that I can go and pick that one up from the library and get that one um, and continue the series. I don't know that I will read one a month. Um, but I will definitely give it a go uh, to get a few more of these. And like I say, they are available from the library. So I'm not spending any money. And um, this did earn me 50p. So I'm not going to complain about that. The next book was a, another series continuation and was another book that counted towards removing things from my e-reader uh, because it was another of the e-books and that was Fury of Misfortune by Corrine Callahan. This is book seven in her Dragon Fury Scotland series. Um, She's very heavily into writing this series at the moment where the um, American series is on the back burner. Uh, but yes, we are nearing the end of the Scottish pack finding their fated mates. Um, this one was not a disappointment at all. Um, I liked how uh, the, you had to work a bit harder in this one for the couple. I can't remember which couple it is. Bear with me just a moment while I flip to the review section. This was Levin and Priya. Priya um, doesn't have any special talents, unlike some of the women um, from the Dragon Fury Scotland. Um, what I did feel with Levin and Priya's story is that she really was progressing the main plot line um, and also pushing us a little bit further forward towards maybe a join up between the American and the Scottish series because there is a connection between them that they haven't twigged yet, that neither side has twigged yet. And I really want them to twig it because I really want them to get together because I think that they would be 
an awesome force against the overarching evil that is affecting both groups um, in some ways. Uh, and I just think that they would wipe it off the face. So I think it is, we are starting to gear up to the big finish. Um, and I'm really, I, they, I think the author has been giving out some hints that maybe the next book might be about the um, American pack. So we'll wait and see. But thoroughly enjoyed it. Really, I love Corrine Callahan's writing. Um, reading the early books, I see a lot of similarities between this and the um, Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. Uh, but I discovered the Dragon series before I discovered the Vampire series. And I think what corinne has successfully done is she's been able to split off she doesn't release a book a year she has had some gaps in her writing um but she's managed to successfully split off from the pack and she's introduced a new story and there is going to be a link up between the two eventually you can see it coming a mile away um but yes it does work really well um and i just really enjoy being in her world and i've reread the series um, her American series a couple of times and it it's just it's fresh to me every time and I can't um, recommend her highly enough if you want some dragon shifter romance smutty heaty romance novels so go and check the, go and check her out because I, she needs to be talked about more my final e-reader finish for the month was The Dragon's Bidder, again by Jessie Donovan. This was book three in her Tahoe Dragon Mate series. And in this one, we're following the clan leader this time um, and a member of the American Dragon... Um, I can't remember the full title of the... Uh, but they are the committee, the um, like government body who oversee uh, what the dragons are and are not allowed to do um she is not allowed to get involved with any dragon shifters um in any way shape or form or she will lose her job so she's been fighting her attraction to the clan leader the clan leader has known that she is his fated mate for years and has been trying to fight the attraction from his side because he knows that she loves her job and he doesn't want to be the reason she loses it but they decide to, or he puts himself forward for a charity auction and she decides she's going to take advantage and she's just going to have one night, even if nothing physical happens between them, she's going to have one night where they can just be two people getting to know each other outside of their jobs. And she wins the bid on him. And it's about what happens from there, how they navigate the world that they live in um, and how they find the, a way to eventually be together thoroughly enjoyed it again it was only a shorter story it wasn't a full-length novel so it was a bit shorter um but i did thoroughly enjoy it and i just enjoyed being in her world i think i'm gonna have to take a break from the dragon books for a while though um i don't think you'll see any in my february wrap-up when i get to the end of the month um I think I need to go away from them and come back to them. But yes, I, I just really enjoy this series. I enjoy the different setting. It's always sunny um, in America, um, around Lake Tahoe. The, the time that she set this series, the time of year that she set this series, it's always sunny there. Whereas in England, it's never that, um, that sunny. So yeah. My next two finishes were my audiobooks. Uh, the first one is because I... I wanted something to listen to on the way to work. Um, I wasn't feeling music at that point, And I wanted something that would be quick as well. I didn't want... I, a lot of my audiobooks I have are fantasy novels. And I struggle with those a little bit with driving to work because I don't feel like I can pay attention to them in the same way. Um, but the first one that I listened to was My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. This is about a young woman who starts out, she's working for a marketing agency in London and it's about what happens to her, the disasters. She's very much of this time um, following people on Instagram and seeing their perfect life, her boss who appears to have the perfect life. She has all this money and she has the big house. 
whereas she's living in a tiny little box room in a three bed um terraced house in across london um and she doesn't understand why these people are moaning when they have the perfect life uh, because she's been sucked in by social media and i thoroughly enjoyed it because it's about what happens when things come crashing down around her ears and she's forced to move back to somerset um to live on the farm with her father and her um her stepmom and it's quite funny um because it's then from there it's all about how she kind of finds out that not everyone's life is as perfect as it seems and hilarity ensues from there i really enjoyed this i've steered clear of sophie kinsella um i didn't think that she would be for me it is um I would say she's not really romance although there is a bit of a romance subplot it's not a romance novel it's more women's fiction um and i just didn't think it was for me because i've not really got on with that before but i can't believe i sat on that for so long because i really enjoyed myself all the way through um and i love the overtone that she had that sophie kinsella wrote into it about the narrative of you shouldn't believe everything you see and read online because we put our best selves online we don't put the dirt and we don't put the bad and we don't put the gritty i mean you're sat here you know looking at your screen seeing my almost perfect bookshelves behind me um if i turn the camera around and showed you the rest of the room yeah it's it's not so good it's not as good as it seems um and i love that narrative and i think she's woven that really really well and she she makes that point in such a fabulously humorous way um that you don't uh feel you don't feel bad for it yourself for buying into it um and yeah it was just it was just good fun and i would definitely pick up another book by her in future because this was just absolutely brilliant fun and I'm so glad that I finally got round to picking it up. Um, and again, I mean, it removed a book from my TBR. My final finish of the month, it was mainly read in audio, but I did read some of it in physical as well. And that is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. This is the January pick for the book club I belong to. I can't say whether I enjoyed this book or not. I've given it a three stars because anything less feels too low, anything more feels too high. I feel like I should have enjoyed it more than I did. I feel like I should have taken away from it more than I did. It's about three different, there are three main narratives in the story and one of the narratives on the synopsis, it says, six decades later, the house stands empty, Viv, mourning the death of her father, catalogues Ruth's belongings and discovers her place in the past and perhaps a way forward. Now, I thought that would mean that she would have find out more about the past and that um, there would be more of a tie-in with the um, other two characters, Sarah and Ruth. Um, in the present day in Viv's story only there wasn't it's three completely separate narratives there are some little um, short pieces at the end of every section of the book from completely different women um, there are a lot of trigger warnings for this book by the way sexual abuse, physical abuse look up the trigger warnings um, I can't remember what I wrote down for them all to be honest with you um, I don't have them written here in front of me um, but yes they they I think there's murder in this book I think there's rape it's just pretty awful and the overarching theme I think is that women live with a lot of day-to-day -day general abuse from men um, all in this setting around North Berwick in Scotland um, with this rock that sits off in the distance offshore. I just, I just, I really don't know what to say. I just, I feel misled, I think is probably the main thing by the synopsis because it wasn't the story I thought I was getting. Um, I certainly got some of the sinister feelings from it that we 
which was the reason the theme was that we wanted to pick dark, sinister, you know, books that kept us like a little bit, mm, don't know what's going to go on here. I don't even know how to formulate my thoughts. Jess has sent us a list of questions to to um, think about for the live show because we haven't had that yet. That <clears throat> so, mm, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. I don't even really want to have rated it. I wouldn't recommend it, but I want to reread it. I don't know. I can't make it make sense. I wish I could. So that was my final finish of the month, um, which wasn't a great ending to the month, but oh well, onwards and upwards. Let's see if February can bring something better. So that was my month of January reads. Um, in the main, a good month, a couple of letdowns, a couple of surprises. Um, but yeah, I didn't have that bad a month at all. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, what did you read in January? Let me know in the um, comments box down below. If you've read The Bass Rock, what did you think of it? What did you take away from it? Please let me know because I want to know what I missed out on. Um, and that's enough said about that book. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel to see more of me around your feed. And I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.